Hey guys, JH and Mr. X. Uh, okay, just it's awful conditions here today, guys. It's just so windy and it's just killing us in the direction here. But I just wanted to, uh, to give you an update on where Mr. X is in terms of he's almost at the point where he's got his final protocol now. He hasn't altered it for a few weeks now and he's hitting the ball incredible uh, consistency and ball flight. So he's got a few specific things that he's applying in the protocol now and uh, well he can tell you what they are. I'll just grab the driver. Okay. Um, with the, with the, coming back to the driver I, I had uh, a few issues with ball position. Um, I was getting a little bit further and further and further forward um, as we do when we sort of don't check it from time to time and I was getting some balls that were just starting to go a little bit left and I thought why is this happening um, and then I was talking to you uh, later last late last week and we um, realized that I, my ball position had come come way too far forward uh, so we corrected that and now um, everything is back to on the line on the target line um, where it should be and and of course what we need to do guys to make sure that doesn't happen is have a very very specific uh, protocol structure for your ball position if that's the ball there where that T is there when we come in we want to if, if we're going to hit an iron it's got to be there and we don't move from there we can move around a little bit but that trail foot and that trail foot can move back a little bit but it can't go forward or backwards and you have to have a starting point. Um, See, I, I had that with the irons, I had that down pat. Yeah. Um, it, it was the longer clubs that uh, were throwing me off a little bit. Yeah. Um, a little bit of cross-contamination, if you want to call it that. But, but uh, when he said he was hitting it a little bit left, it was only, it was, was just marginally left. I mean, it was not left to left it was still like a beautiful shot and for all intents and purposes someone looking I think that's just a straight shot with a draw but it was just a little bit left of where you're aiming wasn't it yeah it wasn't left it left yeah it wasn't starting left he was just getting his aim out because the ball went up a little bit yeah and and so we've all we're going down the road now guys which which we all should be in in that we should be applying the soggy legs and the knees and Mr Rex particularly with his driver it's just the ball flight is just exquisite and he really is got this knee action shock absorber he said he just feels like that now and he's got his lead foot out just turned out a little bit so that it makes him in his mind feel because of the angulation of that or the angularity of that lead foot his knee wants to go towards that that uh, that that lead toe and because it's on an angle like that it basically is, is in concert with the channel angle that we have in the golf swing. So, okay, we've got, we know that, that, that the back ball position is not negotiable no. uh, once we've established it. Um, we, we know that in, in just set up to the ball. Now, the other thing I said to, to, to Mr. X, the advantage of having the ball back off that trail foot is that it makes you back cock your shoulders the prescribed amount and and I say that from this point of view if I've got the ball watch just watch my shoulder line if I've got the the ball there look where my shoulders are here and I move forward a little bit the shoulders kicking out here now if I move forward a lot or, or, or into the back foot ball position my shoulders just naturally have to follow the the hands moving back here and, and the hips moving back they just have to follow that, so the shoulders have got to do that. So if your shoulders are not back cocked a fair amount at address, you'll know the ball's not back far enough. That's a checkpoint for you. You just set up in your, in your current uh, protocol position for the driver. And it's cold here today, guys. Wow. Okay, now... Okay, just go up to a forward ball position. Just set it up on a forward ball position. Here's our shoulder angle. Okay, just move forward. Angles move set. 
So okay guys now, now that's about where you want to play it. Okay now we've got about we got about 20 degrees on those shoulders there. And, and that maybe is your checkpoint. Just do that side on, we'll have a look here side on, back at the camera, back this way, yeah. Just set up okay, with the front, front ball position. Yeah. Here we are with the shoulders. Okay. Right, now just move it back. I'm coming to you. Okay, now look at that guys. Big difference, isn't it? Now that's your checkpoint. Now not only that, what it does in conjunction with that, as those shoulders turn, it just takes the chin with it. It gives you more of a lockdown on the five o'clock nose. That's the advantage of that back ball position. The, the more we get it back here, the more, it's very hard to get your head there and your shoulders turned there. They don't want to do that. I mean, they don't want to be out of sync in terms of playing. As I turn my shoulders, my nose should automatically follow the turn of those shoulders. So they're just a couple of points, but they really are important and they've, they're, they're massive for you, aren't they? Also, for me, to, by, by doing this back ball position and letting the cocking of the shoulders, it gives me my inside path gives me the um, the channel. Yeah, I can focus more on the channel. You get a visual feeling of the channel, do you? The, the channel. visual look of it. You yes. can sort of, you know, you can sort of peripherally look out of your trail eye there down the channel. Because it, it it's on my shoulder line. Yeah, it's, it's in here. Yeah, rather than if your shoulder line is like this, yeah. and you go out there. Yeah. It's a strange feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an yeah. unnatural. But once you're back cocked, there it is. Yeah, there's your inside channel. Yeah. Yeah, side of the body channel. Yep. Now the other thing was that, uh, that Mr. X says that soon, as now that he's committed to, this wind is so strong, so now that he's committed to to having that, the soggy knees and the bent lead knee with the driver, he's just driving the ball like a machine. It's just, and for someone who used to be a really wild driver, to be able, like we've got massive wind here today right to left and he was just hitting some shots up here into what we call a very defined small narrow fairway and he was just knocking every shot in there and i think you've mentioned this before the the pull with the left hand okay okay now i don't mention it enough guys but really in order to get the feeling of an inside path that 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 action there of pulling with the lead hand and taking the trail hand off that's what you've got to feel in the golf swing with the trail hand on. Here, that's what you've got to feel. Pull, pull. And the, th and the thing is, the more you pull with that lead hand, the more you'll get thumb down and you'll get natural forearm rotation and club face closure and release. Because at the end of the day, guys, we're swinging the arms and the hands into out, but the club face has to release towards the target. So it's got to do that. The club has to go that way. The hands, arms are going out there. But the, but the forearm has to rotate down like that. Okay, um, you're gone. The benefit, the benefit of the pull too is it leaves this trail side behind. Yeah, it does. Oh, no question. Soon no as, question. As soon as you want to apply the right-hand side, this comes out to meet the ball. Yeah. If you're pulling with the left side, the right side stays back. Well, well I, I term it and, 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 and categorise it as the lead arm pulling the trail arm, which is the dominant arm, into the power hitting position. It pulls it into position and then lets it hit. It doesn't let it hit from the top. It subdues the, the trail arm and the trail shoulder by pulling with the lead hand and the lead arm uh, and even the lead shoulder in the downswing. That's a whole advantage of pulling with that lead arm. Okay, now, now we've got a really hard right to left wind here straight into us across there. Just hit a couple of drives up there, Mr. X. And I just want you to have a look at his shock absorber knee action. Now that, that's quite pronounced, isn't it, guys? I mean, he's really, really sitting into that. And the great advantage in hitting into the wind like that is that it really bores the ball. There's no pop-ups with this golf swing. You no. can't, you can't sort of, you won't flare the flight ever. Now 
he's really sitting down into that. Just hit a couple of irons. And, and of course, what he's got, guys, is he's 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 taking this, you know, from from everything, from from you know, short shots right through to the driver. Now that that's a really beautiful shot into the into the wind. The wind is so strong. But see, it looks the same, and that's what we want to have. We don't want to have two different looking golf swings. We want to have the same looking golf swing, no matter what the shot is. Yeah, that's just clamped. Wow. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, look, the, the ball flight that Mr. X has got now is just, well, it's, I'd say it's as good as anybody here, and we've got and Australian it, tour winners that, that, that practice here. It's the finish, you know you've, when you've got it, because you finish down here. Yeah. And then you stand well, to, to and, see and, the ball. And you're actually looking under, aren't you? You're looking under to see the golf, golf ball. We're not sort of here looking at it. It's the right eye coming under, and we're, and we're looking at it from that, from that perspective. Just hit... Hit a couple more irons. Yeah, what's amazing is that because he's with channel lock. Mr. X is getting that golf ball, and his divot is about that far past the ball. It's just amazing how long the club stays on the ball and level and straight. It's amazing. It's the old Mo Norman thing. I mean, you know, Mo used to, and Trevino used to keep the club down the line further than normal, and 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 it's ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't get as as much uh, of the club on the line as long as Mr. X does, but his divots are like over here. And the ball's back here. It's just crazy stuff. And they're just beautiful shots. You see, see if you if you if you're going to be into the back of the ball like he is, I mean, there's no there's hardly any side spin on the ball at all. I mean, if there was any, you know, severe draw spin on that with this window to be gone, but it's just holding its line. It's just sort of, you know, just shimmering, just hanging in the in the breeze there. So, what else can we tell the people? Um, I've I've gone to a little bit like uh, your more your stance with the left foot is a little bit more forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's changed. I used to be fairly square to well parallel square to yep. where I wanted to go. But now I've taken the left foot slightly forward and I feel like this knee is over the front of my toes. Okay. At, at the start of the swing. Oh, wow. Is that right? And I want to push it further. Okay, so that's interesting. We hadn't spoken about that. Um, I feel when I set up here, this is unloaded for me. Okay, this is bent and it may look like I've got weight forward there, but I haven't. It's actually unloaded. It's just, it's just sitting there. Yeah, but you're flexible enough to have a little bit of loading in that lead knee and still be able to turn your hips and get in behind you. I'm not flexible enough there. If I had a little bit of load left, I would have a bit of trouble getting into my right side. But he's pretty flexible. Um, also, the, the, the benefit of that left knee, it, it stops me from over-rotating on the way through. I, I used to, like everybody does, stand up oh, yeah. and the hips yeah. go left. Oh, of course. And causes a, a terrible hit. Sing, single biggest problem with any conventional golf swing is is that aggressively too early. And it's the single biggest problem with the tour play. When they whip it left or snap cut it or something like that, it's always this. Okay, um, I don't think we could add much to that no. and that battery was a bit flat. Okay guys, just a little bit of revision and 
that's would you say that's your basically your final protocol? I'd say final. Yeah. I don't think I can go any further from yeah. there. Yeah, you don't need to change. Okay guys, 